Welcome back for the Young Shakespeare Podcast. This is episode number 33. Today I'm joined by Harvard Football Center, Scott Elliott. Scott, thanks for coming on the show. Pleasure to be here, Danny. Uh, it is awesome to have Scott in the studio. Uh, he was a TVL MVP in high school, even though he was a lineman, so that gives you a little sense of his skill. He won just about every All-Scholastic or All-Star award you can get into, so I'm not even going to bother. Metro West, Herald, all that stuff. Uh, so it's cool to have him here, and he's on the varsity football team at Harvard, which sure. is a school in Cambridge people maybe have yeah, heard of. Yeah, might have heard of it. Uh, first question, just get right into it. Do you hate Yale football? I hate them with a passion. <laughs> hate them with a passion. No, they, uh, I mean, they beat us the last last time we played them. Double overtime game. We were up, obviously. Crazy game. That was all over Sports Center. Um, was this at Fenway? No, that this was uh, during the protest. Do you, you do you remember the protest? Yes, the protest. Yeah, so that was I, yeah, that was everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So um, I mean, we we're we we're up on them. I want to say by 10, 10, 14 points or something like that. We had the momentum going at halftime, and um, you know, we were four and five. The season wasn't going as well as we thought it would have. Um, and they had a chance of winning the Ivy League championship. So I mean, we were playing to knock them off. Yeah, the take them out of that. Exactly. So, um, you know, the protests happened. We kind of lost our edge. Um, and then things started falling apart at the end for us. But um, Was that yeah. frustrating at halftime? How long were you guys in there? I want to say we were in there for like 45 minutes, like an hour. Yeah, and Spencer Cassell, who came on the podcast, told me that you guys were sort of stuck in a place that was really hot. And yeah. Packed in like sardines almost. Yeah, a little bit. Like, you know, came out after halftime and people were on the field and then they took us off the field uh, after you know even more fans came onto the field Mm -hmm. um so yeah just like you don't you never know what's gonna happen with that you never know how long you're gonna be able to uh how long you're gonna have to stay in like the tunnel or anything like that and they actually finished the game in the dark because Yale doesn't have lights so that was wow because we went into the over time there was the hour delay um so with all that, we were working against the sun, which was pretty crazy. So if you see the Yale Ivy League championship photos, they're like with flash in the dark with the with the championship. Dang. Trophy. Yeah. You told me something crazy about the game. What was it? What, what did you witness some Yale students doing? Oh, so this was after the halftime protests. Yale students got up that were in the first row, stripped naked, and, and turned around <laughs> towards the field as we were playing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I guess that's like a tradition that they do every year or something like that. It's a that. weird tradition. Yeah, it's, it's a little <laughs> odd. It's a little odd. Don't expect that when you're playing. But, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was a uh, – I think it made, like, the front page of Yale News or something like that. Because, because, like, how much attention the game got with the protests and everything, that, that just had – I mean – you saw everything that game. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a perfect way to put it. I saw a video on YouTube. It was like maybe the t- 2005 the game. These Yale students they dressed up in Harvard pep squad shirts and they handed out all these signs and they basically charted out the Harvard uh, seating area for the fan zone and they spelled out "We suck" and had yeah. the Harvard people hold it. I've I've seen that. One. I, they, pretty creative. You got you got to give them that. Oh one. yeah, no, that that was a, that was a pretty good prank. I'll give it to them. We got to give it back to them. But um. Yeah, no, I saw that on, like, college game there or something like that, and they actually interviewed the guys who, who pulled the prank. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that, that was pretty funny. I wonder, who, do you know who won that game? I don't. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, but... Uh, do yeah. you, who's, who's up in the rivalry in total? Who's got more wins? Honestly, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. So there's, a, there's actually, like a, like, a student bar under the uh, freshman dining hall at Harvard, and they have every single game for I don't know when the first game was, but they have every single game with the scores and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. So um, it's been going a while. What's crazy is in Harvard Stadium, there's banners up right that'll be like 1914, like NCAA champs, and right? Stuff, or national yeah. champs, whatever it was. Yeah, I think the last time we won a last time we won a national championship was like 1920 against Oregon. <laughs> That's so, crazy, yeah, dude. Yeah. So uh, like we so college football celebrated the 150th anniversary in 2019 I think the last time that we played Mm -hmm. but we didn't wear the 150th um little logo thing because it wasn't the 150th year that we played yeah so one of the crazy things I've been learning about is the routine that you guys have what time of day does a Harvard football player wake up even during the summer Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm a little on the earlier side. I like to wake up between like 5, 5.15 in the morning. 
Jeez. Um, Jesus. <laughs> some guys like to be a little later and cut their t- but I like to I like to get to What's the late? What's considered late? Um <laughs> like late wake up. 545. <laughs> like, like, that's it. You know most of the kids our age, dude, are waking up in the summers, like, 10, 10 o'clock, bro. I know. I know. Depends which, on if you're working. Some people are... Yeah. But 5 o'clock, dude, you're crazy. I know. So, yeah, I mean, 5... Like, we got workouts. Some... Actually, some... We have two workout groups this summer. So, one starts at 530, and those guys get up at, like, 445. Like, Monday, Jeez. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And they have to get on the field by like five twenty-five or something like that. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I'm lucky that I'm. You're late. in the late group, uh, which yeah, is six thirty. Start, start six thirty is considered the late group. Yeah, yeah. I could not do five thirty four times a week. Is it nice to feel productive and get up and get after it? It does. Yeah, for sure. Because like, uh, so we'll start out. We'll do stretching and everything like that. We'll do speed work. We'll condition. Then we'll go in and lift. And by the time you're out, it's like eight fifteen, eight thirty, and you know, shower, and then you just start your day. You start your job. I mean, you get to take a nice little nap, but, like, it, it yeah. is just, like, because, like, I don't like the, the feeling of, um, you know, sleeping in. Like, I can't sleep past, like, 7.30 now. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's just conditioned. Yeah, it's just, like, it's kind of embedded in my brain. Like, you'll wake up in a panic, like, on your off day. If, if you like, <laughs> look at your phone at 6.30 and you think you're late, and it's just... <laughs> And yeah, so um what time do you go to bed to make all this work? Like nine, nine thirty. Like That's, ten o'clock yeah. at the latest. Like I like to I like to get seven hours at least. Just because if I don't then I'll just feel groggy in the morning and I won't do as well in the lift and everything. Yeah, and and so you said sort of conditioning, speed and then a lift too. Yeah, so we'll like um so we'll do linear speed work Monday and Thursday, uh lateral speed work Tuesday and Friday. Uh, some different type of competition drills with those, and then we'll do mostly sprints, different lengths uh, for conditioning. Um, and then Monday and Thursday are more like our heavy heavy squat days, heavy on the legs, um, and then we'll end with some end Tuesday and Friday with some big benches and stuff. Yeah, what what is your bench squat deadlift look like? Um, like what's your your best ever? I'd have to say like bench is like 340, 350, squat's got to be 500, <laughs> but I, I don't, I hate deadlifting. Like my back cannot take a deadlift. Well, you know what I heard on a, a podcast with Robert Ober or Robert Ober. Oh, the Joe Rogan one? Yeah. Did I, you hear what he said about deadlifts? He said basically you won't see competitive football teams even doing deadlifts because it's not really worth the risk of it. They're so bad for your back and stuff like that. Yeah. So like, I think. Is that like, accurate? Do you guys deadlift? We we trap bar deadlift. We don't straight bar deadlift. Okay, so, trap bar. Yeah, hex Ober, bar, yeah? Yeah, the hex bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Ober said that because his deadlift's not that great. But <laughs> <laughs> Got but, him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. His football wasn't that great just, either, I heard. Where, where did he go? Uh, it was, I don't think it was D1. He threw yeah. shot put too, and he, I think he was solid. But yeah, He has. I mean, he's a monster. I mean, when guy. you're dude, if you're 6'8", like, built like that, oh, like... Yeah. You should be able to play whatever. Yeah. Whatever you want, dude. He's got like the highest shoulder press or something like that for an American. Yeah, right. Something crazy like that. Those, that's probably the most impressive lift some of those guys can put like just straight press like 400 pounds over their head. Right. Jesus Christ. And they do it with like no explosion. Like like they'll get like a little knee bend. And yeah, the tiniest, dude. Yeah. Like, like we'll focus more on like Olympic lifts and stuff like that. So like clean and press, hang cleans. Um... But yeah, I haven't deadlifted this summer. You, you told me there's on the, back. the strongest or one of the strongest guys in the team. You you saw him at lift doing like five reps at six hundred something. Yeah, he was squatting uh, this morning. He was squatting six hundred pounds for five reps after at, after conditioning and stuff. Yeah, after that must be a big bar bend at that point. Do oh. you guys have special bars or anything like that? Not really. I mean, we like. I mean, we'll have guys squat like 550, 600 pounds. Um, and like we'll have spotters and everything like that, but this kid just hits it so clean, and like his depth's good. Like he's a he's a real good lifter. That's what you love to see when the depth is there too. Exactly. Yeah, someone that's doing crazy weight, but they're not they're not even getting to even. You're exactly. like, all right, it's not as impressive. Yeah, it's not as impressive though. De- uh, definitely not. What would you say your advice is to a kid if they ask you like what what does it take to play Harvard or D one football? What would you tell them? I mean, I think first and foremost, like, it's all about the attitude. Like, you got to be mentally tough because there was, there was like, an Instagram post that was just posted of, like, a college football's fall camp schedule, 
And it's like, you're going from 6.30 to 10 o'clock at night, meetings, mandatory meals, practices, more mm-hmm. meetings. Um, so definitely like going into your freshman year, it takes a toll on you and there's definitely a learning curve. Um, and some people deal with that better than others mm-hmm. and then throw school on top of that afterwards. Yeah. Um, definitely mentally, being mentally tough, um, but also, you know, just being able to absorb things, you know, being, being a little humble because, um, you know, going in as, as a freshman, it's really hard to be the strongest guy, really hard to be the fastest guy. And like, you know, you're coming from high school where you probably are those things. Yeah. So when you, when you kind of get humbled a little bit, like I remember fall camp, I was playing center and I was going up against like a senior D lineman and I went to back block him. And, and you said that the D line was the ranked best in the country for Harvard? Yeah, so our entire D line ranked first in sacks um, for the FCS, mm-hmm. which was uh, which was really impressive, and like those guys really get after it. Um, and so he, sorry, he go yeah, ahead. No, no, I was so, just setting the stage for the for the viewers. No, no, no. Yeah, no. He's like this kid that I went against is pretty good, and he just he put me on my ass like one of the first practices, and I couldn't remember the last time that happened. So I mean, yeah. you, you definitely learn like college football is a little different than high school, um, but being able to just kind of learn and adapt. Um, because it's hard to get on the field your freshman year. It definitely is. Um, there are only a handful of guys in my class that could. Um, and there's a whole new other playbook, too. You know, you got you to gotta juggle academics. got to juggle mm-hmm. a new playbook. got to juggle practices, lack of sleep. Um, so what I, what I found really helpful was leaning on the older guys. Um, you know, there's a great camaraderie in the O-line room. Um, mm-hmm. And the older guys are really helpful. Just picking classes, um, you know, just kind of picking us up when the when the freshmen, you know, we're we're kind of hitting that wall. Like mm-hmm. our coach likes to say, we we're swimming a little bit. Um, not really. Wait, what does that mean? So like, you know, too many things going on at once. Like you're kind of kind of going a lot of different directions. Mm-hmm. You don't really know what's going on. Um, yeah, so I, I would definitely say just being like mentally tough and having a great attitude. Yeah, was that at all intimidating taking the challenge on of D1 football and Harvard academics? I mean, yeah, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, you know, coming from Holliston, you know, public school, um, where, you know, football's not, in Massachusetts, isn't known as the best, mm-hmm. and, you know, you're coming in with a bunch of three-star guys who have Power 5 offers, mm-hmm. um, you know, like, I just kind of, during that summer, I just kind of realized, like, you have to work hard. You know, just to be able to compete with these guys, much less like dominate. Um, so I really took you know strength and conditioning really, really seriously that summer. I would run every yeah. single day. I mean, I would look at the look at the uh, conditioning card and like run more sprints afterwards, just because I know like, I mean, once I get there, it's going to be nothing that I've ever experienced before. Yeah. So I better be ready for anything. Um, so I went in really good shape, um, and it was honestly a similar offense that I ran, uh, a similar concept like spread offense oh, okay, I ran at yeah. Austin so like um, you know I really hit the really hit the playbook hard really hit the tape hard and uh, that's kind of that kind of how I you know kind of immerse myself in the whole football stuff what makes you sort of what's what makes you a good football player and we talked about this a little bit beforehand but is it size or speed what's what's what makes you a good football player I would say like my football IQ mm-hmm. um, you know just kind of I'm a huge film junkie um, just understanding defensive schemes, what they want to do in down and distance situations. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just kind of like, you know, knowing what everybody's job in the offensive line is, knowing all the audibles and everything like that. Um, cause that just makes me more confident. And when I play con- and when I'm confident, I play a lot faster yeah. and I use my technique really well. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not the biggest guy on our line. Like we had like my, this past year we had a guy who was like six, eight, 350 pounds. Which I'm, I'm That's not crazy. that. <laughs> like, I'm not that. But, um, you know, I, I know my strengths and I use them to my advantage. Like, I, I really work on technique and I'm pretty unorthodox with my technique. Like, the stuff that I like to work on, like grip strength, core strength. Um, mm. Just because, you know, I don't have the longest arms. When I latch onto a guy, they're not getting off. Um, just being able to get on their shoulder pads. Um, and kind of like if they try to throw me off, have enough core strength to be able to move with them yeah. and stuff like that. What's unorthodox about your technique? I mean, 
just like uh, you know the way an offensive lineman punches, like they're taught with like two hand punches. Uh-huh. I like to get one hand out there just to kind of feel them out, feel the distance they're at first. And I feel like it's a lot easier to reset your hands if you throw one punch rather than two. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And center is probably the most cerebral position on the line. Yeah. So is that somewhere where you need a guy that's about the football IQ and about the tape, right? Because you have to balance a lot. Yeah, definitely. Like my uh, my freshman year, we had a senior playing center, Jackson Ward, really smart guy, knew the offense, you know, like the back of his hand, knew all the calls, and he was a really good guy that mentored me. Mm-hmm. Um, just you know, understanding tape, like he would stay after like Mondays and just watch tape with me. Um, yeah, and he was really, really good, just, like, kind of educating me about football, why. Like, and it was more about the why, too. Like, why are they doing this in third and long? You know, why are they running a three front instead of a four front? Stuff like that. Wow, that's pretty crazy. What was your position in high school? So I played left tackle um, my first three years, and then my senior year I got moved to right guard just because um, my coaches kind of understood that I was going to be an inside guy in college just because oh, of my yeah. height. Um, so it kind of helped me out there. Wow. Um, and I got a lot more athletic. Like, I lost, I think I lost 30 pounds from my junior year to my senior year. Wow. Just because I knew I was going to play both sides of the ball. So I, uh, I lost that weight, became a lot more athletic, so I could pull a lot more efficiently. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I was wondering, you know, that adjustment where it's um, it's almost like a, 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 like a somewhat tall kid in high school basketball that's got to play guard to be in college uh, from high school to college basketball. So, yeah, you're about 6'3", but for D1 left tackle, that wouldn't really cut it. No, not at all. <laughs> not, not at all. Like, our, yeah. our tackles are 6'5", plus. Like, 6'5", um, plus, 300 pounds. And even, like, at guard, our guards are 6'4". So, I mean, yeah. even then, I'm a little small. So, uh, But guys like Nick Mangold, right? He's probably, like, 6'2". Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, I think so. So, even in the NFL, guys your height at center can can make it happen. Right. Like, you're like you're kind of a wrestler there at center. Because, like, uh-huh. you're, like, you know, just the way you have to move defensive linemen off the ball, you don't have the hand in the dirt, so the weight distribution's a little different than, like, say, yeah. a guard with their hand in the dirt. Um, so, just being able to utilize your body and getting to certain landmarks in the run game and everything like that, um, is it's a little different for centers, so you just kind of have to rep it out a lot yeah and one of the difficult things i would assume is that in the ivy league there's not as much continuity of the teams like on other programs it's gone you know team to team they're building but you guys have been really thrown for loop and that you guys haven't played uh actual game of football since 2019 right is that right yeah um is that is that hard is that make you nervous at all um i mean yes and no um you know, I think, you know, kind of 50 players that are com- 50, 55 players coming in who are sophomores and freshmen who haven't really met the majority of the team. That's mm-hmm. going to be something new that we're going to have to adapt to during fall camp. Um, but then again, the older guys are really good about, you know, getting the getting the young guys, the incoming guys situated. So those incoming sophomores were on campus in the fall. So they kind of know Harvard life a little bit. They haven't mm-hmm. really gotten the taste of you know, real college football yeah. with the older guys and stuff. Um, so I think I think the older guys know the challenge in that, and I think they're even going to take an even bigger stride this year. Yeah. Um, What's the coolest class you've taken at Harvard? I took a class on human trafficking and modern slavery. Whoa. Which was like, so I kind of, yeah, so that, I mean, that name just kind of dragged me in you know what I mean six out yeah so I actually took that I was alone like there were no other football players in it which is like kind of a little unorthodox um yeah so they would have like they would have guest speakers who you know um who have dealt with a lot a lot of you know shady stuff like people that have been human trafficked yeah so they uh they brought in an ex-prostitute actually to speak to the class before COVID started um, and she would just tell us her experiences and how she um, how she got into that line of work. Um, what was you know, what, what did that feel like sitting in the the audience for that? I mean, it was surreal because like you read it a lot in like the news and but like to have her sitting there and talk about her feelings like it just makes it that much more real. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it was really heartbreaking because you know what I learned in that class is like a lot of people do it for money because they don't have anywhere else to go. Mm-hmm. So, 
um, you know, just kind of setting ways and like how you can help those types of people. Um, how you, like, cause it's like, there's a lot of abuse that I kind of saw, like they brought in a child psychologist who deals with, you know, children who've gone through child abuse. And, um, you know, that, that really was, was like heart wrenching just because she yeah. she had stories that like you couldn't even imagine, you know? And, um, yeah, so I think that was one of the, one of the best classes I've taken just because, you know, I, I kind of took it along, kind of took it on a whim and mm-hmm. it like, I, I really enjoyed the class, really enjoyed like my discussion section. I was in a discussion section with all girls and it was just me and just kind of like hearing their, uh, hearing their views and opinions about it, um, which is really, really good. Wow. That, yeah, that sounds like an, an incredible class and it sounds like that's one thing Harvard does bring to the table is it, it has kind of this world class faculty and you know the opportunities. Is there any was there any other classes that stick out to you as notable or interesting? Um, I took a I took a seminar like a history and literature seminar on a uh, race in the American Empire. Mm-hmm. So like, um, you know Harvard's an extremely cultured, uh, extremely diverse school, yeah. obviously. Um, and just kind of learning about the history of the United States and all of that. Um, I took it this past fall, so in a time when the country was pretty, um, was pretty divided, I think that was like, really gave me some, some, some more viewpoints to kind of, you know, just ponder over. Yeah. Who's the most impressive student you've met at Harvard? Impressive student? Oh, yeah. um, there's a kid named Henry. Who I who I would like sit with at lunch sometimes. He would sit with the football guys. He rooms with yeah. the wrestling kids. He before he got into Harvard, he interned at NASA. Whoa! And he, yeah, so I mean, there that's just impressive as hell right there. And then freshman fall, he took the hardest math class in the country as a <laughs> freshman. So I mean, Dang. he was a, he would say like his problem sets and homework would take like 16, 17 hours. So, I mean, that was just pretty... I think I know this guy. Henry? I think his last name like starts with a... I forget what his last name is. Uh, you know, I'm not going to look now, but I believe I DM'd him for an interview. Oh, really? And, he's, and then I saw him... Yeah, and then we're, we're working on I might get him. He, I mean, uh, he... Because you, you said he's associated with the wrestling team? So, he's not on the wrestling team. He just rooms with the wrestling guys. Okay. Yeah, I think I know who you're talking he's, about. Um, yeah, he's like... If you get him on, like he's a really good, really good guy, really good conversationalist. Like you should definitely have him right. Kind of. And one cool thing about, like, yeah, you have these world class academics, but then uh, there's 12 Harvard football players in the NFL right now. Is that right? Yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick and and some yeah. other guys. Juice check, yeah. Yeah, you guys have the jersey people. in your apartment. Yeah. Um, is that you know? Are there any guys in the team now that you think maybe could be in the NFL? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, just like from my from my freshman year, we have uh, two offensive linemen who grad transferred. One's a center at LSU right now, and then wow. one is one's at Penn State right now. Our right tackle is going to be at Penn State after this year. Um, so I mean, a really good history of the offensive line. I think all three of those guys could have a shot at making the NFL. Wow. Um, yeah, and I mean, I think like just looking at our defensive line being the number one in the country and they were really young last year or whenever we played last. Um, so I think those guys will have, have a big impact and have a shot at the league. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think you, you touched on this a little bit, but what would you say, like how, how different is, is high school football versus college football in, te- in terms of the speed and, and the, the style of play and stuff? It's, yeah. It's like honestly night and day. Uh-huh. Like, like, um, I mean, especially playing in the TBL, you know, the, the kids aren't huge, and if they are huge, they're not that fast. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, once you once you go up against a guy who's 300 pounds and runs a sub-4, 740, it's like, you know, you're in a whole different class of athlete, basically. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So, like, um, de- like, like I said, definitely a learning curve. Um, but there are guys who, like, who have played, like, I remember my freshman year, we played Hopkinton, and the DN that I faced ended up playing tight end at Cornell. Um, wow! Like Gons or like uh, like we were talking about yeah. playing linebacker on on Harvard right now. Uh-huh. Um, we played each other in high school, so I mean there are players that I've played that are that have you know made it to legit ball, um, but honestly like you know you dominate like your senior year and everything like that, and then mm-hmm. kind of low man on the totem pole again when you're yeah. a freshman. 
Um, but they do a really good job, like, you know, implementing the freshmen into the system for the fall. And then in the spring is where, like, you really put on, like, that mass and that weight and get the speed up and everything like that. Um, and I think they do a really good job of that. Is there a goal as far as, like, weight goes for you where you're like, this is the optimal playing weight? Yeah, so, like, my freshman year, I dropped 10 pounds during fall camp because I, like, tried to eat healthy and everything like that. So mm-hmm. I, I weighed at, like, 265 during the season. Mm-hmm. And this spring, I was on campus, and I came in, like, way overweight. I was, like, 310. Mm -hmm. So I dropped 20 pounds that semester. Um, So, like, right now, I'd like to play at, like, 285, 290. Yeah. Just because, you know, I'm going to need to be able to move at center, need to be able to pull and everything like that. Um, But also, playing inside, playing against 300-pounders, you need some mass with you, so. Yeah, right? It's sort of like, because sometimes aren't the nose guards, like, not super tall, but they're, like, Vince Wilfork type yeah. builds when they're just very round. Yeah, dude. Like, there was a D tackle that played at Dartmouth my freshman year. I think he weighed like 360. <laughs> so, you got to be ready for guys like that. Exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah, what is the diet of someone that wants to, like, because this is a big thing, right? Where you're these you're doing these brutal workouts, and you're waking up early, and, you know, the metabolic rate of someone that's heavier is going to be like, you're going to be losing calories really quick. Right. How do you keep up in a healthy way, the optimal weight? Can you do it in a healthy way? Health, like, I mean, it, it honestly depends on what you say is healthy. Yeah. Like, so my freshman year, I like my coach wanted me to gain the 10 pounds back and I just couldn't. Like I lose and gain weight really fast. So mm-hmm. if I'm doing if I'm sitting at home for a week, I'll gain five pounds. Like, but like if I'm in yeah. the fall, like if I'm in fall camp, I'll lose 10 pounds, like nothing. Um, so like during the fall, I would like wake up, we'd work out, like I'd have a plate of eggs, plate of potatoes, bacon, throw some barbecue mm-hmm. sauce on there, bagel, like just pound food. I'd have a sub and chips for lunch, probably like a few <laughs> PB and J's before practice. And then for dinner, I would always have like a plate of pasta, a plate of salad, plate of whatever meat's out. And then mm. I would go to the grill, and I would order three cheeseburgers with eggs on them. Oh, it, shit. And I still couldn't gain weight. What? So, like, really, it's, like, it's hard. Like, you're going to need to, like, I was never a huge snacker, but, like, snacks like peanuts, trail mix, like, just protein shakes. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. Did they, do they at all, like, I know at Stonehill, sometimes the football players, they at least give, like, protein powder. Did they at all comp the... Because it almost seems like it's a part of the sport. Do, do they at all pay for your meals and stuff or help you out with that? No. So, like, everybody... They, you're, they're not allowed to give scholarships at Harvard. Is that right? right for right. athletics. Yeah. So, it's all academic... Or, it's all merit-based money. Uh-huh. So, um, like, they, like, they'll like they have, like, snacks in the locker room and stuff like that. And they'll, the weights... The strength staff will give us protein powder and everything. Um, but when it comes to meals, it's like everybody has... Everybody on campus, not just athletes, have unlimited swipes... So you can go into the dining hall as much as you'd like, oh. um, which kind of helps. But uh, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because that would be super expensive to just right. go over. Yeah, um, like I would like honestly, I would eat out lunch a lot. Like that, like we got a real place Hefe's that's like re- that's really good, it's really cheap. You get a bunch of food. Um, Subway was right on my way to the stadium, so I mm-hmm. get that a lot. Um, so like, if you don't like anything at the dining hall, there's a bunch of stuff at. Uh, Bunch of stuff around Harvard Square that's like really nice to have. Well, that'll be good to know if I ever play Harvard football. <laughs> Favorite Harvard movie? Um, honestly, I haven't watched much of them. Ooh. I, I wasn't a huge fan of the Social Network. Mm. I thought they kind of like romanticized Harvard a little bit. Really? Yeah. Um, I think Goodwill Hunting. Mm. I mean that like that's just like one of my favorite movies of all time. Like, I just think Goodwill Hunting is a great movie. Um, is that a big, like, kind of like what you were saying, romanticized? I think from the outside, and this is in interviewing Harvard football guys, it's a big thing I've been trying to figure out. Like, yeah, is it a little, is it as, I don't want to use the word magic, but is it is it as special as it seems from the outside with the castles and the, um, the reputation? Or do you think it's just like more... Hey, like we're regular kids. We're you know highly motivated. A lot of us, but it's kind of regular kids at a regular college. Yeah, honestly, I think it. I think it's more the latter. Um, like kids are definitely competitive. Like nobody's. I mean, you'll meet bookworms, but like honestly, a lot of kids are very well rounded, which mm. is really, which was really, it was like a, it was a nice surprise to have. To be yeah. completely honest with you, because I didn't have like going in, I didn't have much 
interaction with a lot of normal students. Um, yeah, so I always say to like recruits and everything like that, like Harvard's just a place where there's a bunch of highly competitive, highly motivated people that just want to push each other and are there to help you um, mm-hmm. just succeed. Because yeah. everybody, everybody's trying to work towards like a similar goal. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though it's highly competitive, it's not like, you know, kids aren't undermining you and everything like that. Like everybody wants oh, to yeah. succeed. So it's, it's a really good culture that the school has too. Do you have goals for later on in life after football's over? Yeah, I mean, hopefully I get a job. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Are yeah. you working now on top of everything? Do you I, have time to work? I am, yeah. So I'm working at Fidelity right now. Oh, wow. Um, Are you with Spencer or is it different? No, we're, we're, we're in a different unit. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm working like more of a consulting internal strategy role, not as much finances as, he, as he's working with. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love it. Like the people are great. My boss has been amazing. My boss is actually from Medfield. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so uh, he's a nice guy. No, I mean, guy. not cool. I hate Medfield, but <laughs> go on, yeah. <laughs> no, he's a, he's a nice guy. Um, his kids didn't go to Medfield, so it's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but everybody I've met there is really nice. I love the work that I'm doing. Um, but as it pertains to after football, I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, I got four years of eligibility left. Um, maybe take a post-grad year for two years, mm-hmm. which... I mean, if I can get an MBA for uh, for free, why not? You know, that would be sick. Yeah, that'd be that'd be really nice, and that'd help definitely after you know graduate school and everything like that. Um, yeah, so maybe work in finances, maybe work in consulting. Haven't really decided yet. Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure all that out. Right. Um, you've seen obviously, you guys are allowed to make money now. Yeah. Yeah. Have you thought about capitalizing in on that? I mean, Maybe getting Hefe's to sponsor the linemen or something like that. That, uh, that I have thought of. Like we thought Hefe's about Hefe's athlete. We thought, of, we thought about bringing out a, a old line calendar, but I think that got shut oh down. Oh my god! Um, Yo, I buy that shit, dude. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, we might still do it. Who knows? But uh, no, honestly, I mean, you know, I'm uh, I'm not. I didn't do the bar stool stuff. I probably should have done that. That would have been pretty cool. But um, yeah. Well, I'm still foggy on what they actually give you guys i think it's a i t-shirt. think they're foggy on what they're gonna give yeah you. <laughs> uh, yeah i think it's like some memorabilia but like what i was thinking with that is you know they started getting a bunch of athletes and i was like okay so what's the criteria to get in um and there wasn't really any criteria so i was like i don't know how much i'm actually gonna get out of this so i i mean i was just i just decided not to do it um just based off that um yeah, but I don't know. Uh, I mean, I play offensive line. Off the offensive line aren't, mm-hmm. aren't too marketable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I don't know how many how many sponsorships I could get. But the Hefe's idea is not a bad idea. Yeah. Right. Maybe like I don't know. Yeah. Some lo- some local places. Yeah, maybe some food. Maybe uh, Cassie's driving school in Halston. Oh, maybe. maybe. Yeah. That's for people that don't know. We went to driving school together. Exactly. I picked him up right in this very house one day. I think <laughs> what we were doing in our driving hours. Yeah. Oh, that's true, man. Yeah, yeah. That's true. And I, the weird thing is I almost, uh, I played Hollis in football for two years, but you were too big. And I brought this up with Spencer. I, I really dislike these rules. Yeah. That so kids, you can't play with your, your age group. Because even at that age, even being a bigger guy, like, we don't hit that hard in fourth right. grade. So I find that, did, was there frustration about that rule when you were younger? For Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah definitely. You were, you had to play two years up, which was kind of just too dangerous so you ended up just coaching right yeah so i coached for a few years but then i went back and still played with the older guys but like you said it is dangerous just because like i mean i wasn't developed as much as those older kids Mm -hmm. um but it was good like i mean you were like they're bigger and faster than you so i worked on a lot of technique like i said which i'm big on um yeah but like the weight i think they're i think a lot of programs Mm -hmm. are going away from that weight rule um just because, like, they want to be more inclusive and, you know, football with all the concussions and everything like that, I think you see less and less kids signing up every year. Oh, yeah. Um, so just, like, trying to make it more marketable for everybody who wants to participate, I think uh, I think has been pretty big with the kind of going away from the just the old, like, the uh, the older lighters and the... the yeah, and the older like lighters, yeah. dude. Do you ever worry about CTE? Or do you think maybe, oh, I'm not playing that long, it's not really going to... I mean, yeah. I don't know. Are you playing longer? Do you think you play in the NFL? I mean, I don't know, dude. I mean, if if there's a shot there, like, might as well take it. You yeah, only right. get, a, I mean, you only get a certain amount of snaps in your life. But, I mean, I'm uh, I'm very happy with college football right now. Yeah. So like, the original question, yeah, do you worry about CTE? I mean, 
yes, it's obviously on my mind. Like I. Uh, oh, it, well, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. No. Um. But uh. Yeah. Like I definitely use my head a lot. Um, <laughs> I, I like. I will say that to anybody. Um. But just like with the studies and how like concussions work and everything like that, like I use my head in a good way, if there could be a good way. Hmm. Um, no, but uh, is it because you're you mean you're close in on the line? You're not like on a kickoff, like sprinting down. Right, like I'm not getting blindsided by anybody. Knock on wood. Um, yeah, like getting like you know speared in the head and in the side or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I mean I've definitely kind of. Like, once all those CTE things came out, like, I definitely got better at using my hands, using my hips, kind of exploding through the block, uh, using my face mask, keeping my head up, um, you know, all, all the good things. What's the biggest misconception about Scott Elliott? Um, I don't know, dude. Uh, I guess that I'm just, like, I mean, I'm a really nice guy. Um, <laughs> That's, this is true. I can I, verify that, this. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I say that, like, I'm a responsible driver. I'm really not. <laughs> like, I've had a, like I've had friends that like drive like, drive behind me that like show me swerving between lanes on the highway and I just won't realize it. No but way. Everybody like thinks that I'm, I'm very responsible and they always trust me, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not that great of a driver. <laughs> Misplaced trust. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy, and I think that kind of driving school. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so cigarettes, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. They were always smoking cigarettes. The God Duncan's. love them, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, we're stopping at Duncan's. You want anything? I was like, yeah, I want to drive for an hour. <laughs> Sit in the parking lot for 20 minutes. I know. But then it was like, yeah, you know, sometimes you didn't want to drive. You're like, all right, whatever. Yeah, exactly. I just chill on my phone. <laughs> but that, yeah, they were always they were always smoking, bro. Yeah. My brother's in driving school right now, actually. Oh, They're really? doing it online, yeah. Online? Yeah. So I, don't, I don't know. I was driving school. I have no idea. Dang, man. That... Who knows? Sorry, what was the original... Oh, yeah, I was going to make the point that... um, uh, I, Yeah, I, I had Gonzer on, and I can't remember if we uh, talked about this before or during or after the podcast, but we were kind of talking about you saying what an amiable, sort of nice guy you are, and we were both agreeing. He was like, yeah, I could talk... He goes, I could talk for an hour about how nice Scott is, but I've seen him play on the field, and he's... He can be he can be a beast. He can be mean. What is that like? Can you told me it's it's sort of inherent to you? Is is that right? Yeah, I mean, I'm like I'm a very chill, neutral guy. Like, really, just love to have fun off the field. But like, once the pads come on, it's just like you know, it's all about work. And then like, you know, I don't know. You just kind of this aggression just kind of sparks. Yeah. And you know, you, you got to do a job on the field, and like the competitor in me just really comes out. Do you ever shit talk? No, I never do. That's really? that's the biggest thing that I don't do. So like, like when I pancake somebody, I'll just like I'll grab them and help them up, just to make them feel like even more emasculated. <laughs> like so, like I like I mean I'm not a huge talker as is. Um, I'm kind of more of a quiet guy, laid back. Perfect for a podcast. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. I'm the perfect candidate. But um. No, I never trash talk. Like I'll just stare at somebody. Like I'll I'll break up fights during practice. But yeah, man, that's crazy. And I feel like it almost wasn't necessary in TVO football to trash talk when you're that much size and that much of a reputation on other people. Yeah, it wasn't even that. It was just like, like I don't know. I just never felt like you know you just responded that like if somebody responds to you while you're trash talking, it's like oh you're in their head. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you get a reaction out of them, like, they won, basically. So, it's like, I never start anything, and if they start something with me, it's like, you just ignore them, and then they just feel like, well, what the hell's going on now? Yeah, they're talking to themselves. Yeah, probably, exactly. probably, um, probably feels a little bit silly. Is that, a, is that a big thing that they instill in Halston football in general, or are there kids that are big shit talkers? I mean, there are kids that talk. Like, like yeah. I was just never a huge talker. Um, like really the offensive, like off in the line room really don't talk to be completely honest with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, that's just kind of like, I don't know why it's like that. It was like that at Holliston. It's like that at Harvard. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's just like this, cause we have to talk you now as is like on the line, just about certain calls and movements and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It's just like, I don't know. Everything happens so quick. It's just not really time for it. Um, one of the things that I was thinking of is if you're a kid that's going to go play Ivy League ball and you're really good, but you're like a running back, you'll score a lot of touchdowns, but you will 
face, you know, there's 11 guys trying to tackle you. So it's there's a lot of opposition. There's times when you fail. Was was there ever a sense that, you know, obviously like when you're younger and your freshman year made a state championship run, it was different. But by your senior year, was there ever a sense in TVL football where you're like, man, I wish I could do more. Like just playing this one role isn't enough of a challenge maybe? I mean – Honestly, not really. Like, I loved every second of high school football. Mm-hmm. Like, the guys, like, they're, they're some of my best friends now. Yeah. Um, and just, like, being able to play with them, being able to compete with them, going out there. Like, f- there's nothing like Friday Night Lights. Yeah. To be completely yeah. honest, there's nothing like it. And, I mean, doing more, like, I don't know. I started playing defense when I was a senior. So, I was playing, like, 150 snaps. A game. Like, I ended oh, up. Oh, my goodness. There was a playoff game. We played Situate. And we lost, and that night I ended up in the hospital because I was so dehydrated. Whoa. So, yeah, so I started throwing up stomach acid and everything like that, and they finally released me at, like, 7 a.m. the next morning. So I was just, like, I was, like... Did they give you, like, uh, intravenous fluids oh, yeah, and stuff? Oh, yeah, they gave me IV, yeah. That, that, that helped me so much. No, but that, uh... Was it a cape hospital, like, or a... Or a- a, sh- a shore. No, we were up here, so we were in Hollis. Oh, okay. So I think I went to like Newton Wellesley or something like that. All right, nice. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, so somewhere local was nice, but um, yeah, no. I mean, doing more. No, I mean, you know, Holliston football came with its own challenges and everything like that. So I was. What do really, you, What do you mean by that? You know, just like, you know, being able to push yourself. You know, I was kind of putting like the captain role and everything like that. Um, so just own challenges came with that. Yeah. Just, yeah. You know, leading a team of guys who. We're coming off, you know, kind of a down year for Holliston. Mm-hmm. Um, Great football tradition. Right, yeah. And I think my junior year we were like 5-5 five and five or something like that. And just trying to, you know, not lose the culture that some older guys instilled. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of bring that back. And we've had a couple great years. Um, and the coaching staff's done really well. And the leaders on the team have done really well. So I think that culture's here to stay for a while. Your freshman year, what was the state championship like? It was pretty surreal, dude. Um, we played Chicopee Comp, so like. And were you at left tackle? I was, yeah. Our our quarterback was a lefty, so I wasn't that important. But, oh, okay. Yeah, but like I remember watching film that week, and like our coach was like, "Yeah, you're gonna like they're D into running back, so you're gonna have to be like really quick." So I was like, "All right." So I wasn't really ready for like a lot of power. And dude, I walk out on the field, and there was some like six five, like two hundred thirty oh, offensive man that walked out there. I was like, "Where the hell did they get this kid?" <laughs> and I, like, I mean, honestly, that first half was probably one of my worst first half I've ever played at football. Wow! Just because I don't, I don't know. Like, it, it honestly seemed like a movie. It just went by so fast. Um, was there pressure being a freshman? I mean, not really. I didn't really feel uh-huh. it to be completely honest with you. Um, you know, I just kind of went in there and did my thing. and I mean, I wasn't the best guy on the line at that year, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I mean, just competed. Like, the TVL, the TVL was pretty good that year. Hawkington was pretty good. Um, Medfield had some players. But, uh, I mean, it was definitely, like, a little bit of a change because I hadn't really played football before that. And just being able – oh, I played football, like, 7th, 8th grade. But just, like, playing high school kids, you know – yeah, kids with grown beards and stuff like that. Yeah. I was just like this little freshman walking in. Um, yeah, so I mean that that was that was really good in my development. I yeah. Think. So what were you? How tall were you? About how big were you? About freshman year? I was probably like six one, like two twenty five. Okay, so you were actually decently yeah built built at that point. Yeah, I was never like a I was never a small kid so to speak. Like I was yeah. always pretty big. Okay, that yeah, that's interesting because a lot of. Um, a lot of athletes I talk to have like a year where they just like go, they just get massive right. essentially. Yeah. Um, are you comfortable talking all about like other teams that you may be looking at for college? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Where, where did you get looks from? So I think I ended up with like 10 or 12 offers. Um, my top three were like Harvard, obviously really liked West Point, um, Ooh. and Dartmouth. Like those were the top three that I was like really fell in love with, um, so, Harvard was actually the first school that I visited my sophomore year. First school that reached out to me. And they ended up being the first school that offered me, too. Mm-hmm. So, just, like, I've always had a dream of playing college football. And for them to be, like, the first one to give me that opportunity, um, I didn't take it right away. Like, I obviously wanted to see the other options out yeah. there. But, like, that definitely, you know, that definitely played a huge factor in it, you know, mm-hmm. taking a chance on me. Um, you know, 
I, I loved West Point too. Like, and I fit that offense pretty well. Their guys aren't, you know, humongous guys. Right, because they run. Um, they run the uh, which triple run? option. Yeah. Yeah. So they're uh, so like they play low. They play like they they're run heavy. Lots of run, yeah. Yeah, which I, which I mean I loved. Um, I actually uh, I visited there and I absolutely loved it. And it's like Division One football. Like they're playing Oklahoma. They're playing Michigan. Like yeah, you know they're they're playing Power Five schools that compete in, for national championships. Um, so that was definitely a big influence. I actually had a chemistry teacher in high school that I was really close with, um, who went to West Point. So like on these recruiting visits, they'll you know they'll tell you how great the school is and everything like that. Um, so I kind of just went up to her because. You know, being at West Point, obviously you're a student athlete, but then there's the military obligation that you have too. Yeah. So it's a whole other third part that you don't get at a lot of these other schools. That was my question. I was going to wonder, was there a point when you said, hey, I might commission as an officer that you were like, hey, I'd like to be in the army. Was that a part of wanting to go to West Point? Not really. So that actually played a huge decision in my role, in my... Role and deci- yeah, decision. Yeah, role decision. Sorry about that. Um, because I asked my I asked my chemistry teacher I was like you know how is it like what is it really yeah. like and she was like if you know if you didn't really have any aspiration of going in the army before they started looking at you for football like it might not be your best it might not be your favorite four years yeah so like that wasn't like the what I made my decision off of but that definitely played a role into it um, but I honestly couldn't be happier where I am mm-hmm. though it's one. One thing I, I think I mentioned earlier, my friend that runs for the Naval Academy, yeah. the football players there, they get these waivers and exemptions during the football season to be over the weight limit, but then they have to, once the season's over, they have to be ready for a fitness test and make a certain weight. So you'll actually see that the average weight of linemen at um, West Point and Army is significantly lower yeah. than other of those big power football schools. And it's part of it is because the linemen have to be close enough that they can cut down a bunch of weight to make that weight limit. So my yeah. friend Oliver told me like there was a kid in his hall or his company, as they call yeah. it, um, that was like cutting tremendous amounts of weights, just like starving himself, just drinking water and everything just to be ready. So that would probably not have been a fun part of going there. No, definitely not, dude. And like when I was on the visit, like, I mean, they, they were very honest with how it was West Point. Um, because like during the summer you have these military obligations where, you know, you do training pretty much for the, for the military. So offensive linemen would lose like all their weight and they'd have to gain 20, 30 pounds in fall camp in like a month before the season starts to be able to, you know, be at that size and be able to compete at the division one level. Um, yeah. So that, I mean, just that, like, you know, going through practices every day, walkthroughs, lifts, I can't imagine gaining 20 pounds during fall camp. Yeah. And did you want maybe a more college experience? Yeah, I think that was pretty big. And, you know, Harvard being, you know, so close to Boston, having Cambridge yeah. being, you know, a beautiful city. Um, and Harvard Square has so much to do in, in itself. Um, yeah. You know, like being, like having the T right in Harvard Square, going, being able to go to Faneuil Hall, the North End, um, like Red Sox games, you know, TD Garden, pretty much anywhere, like, no, it's pretty much got everything that a college kid wants. Yeah, and what 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 attracted you to Dartmouth? Dartmouth, I just like really, I don't, like I don't know, like their their football facilities were amazing. I did like the uh, kind of the seclusion a little bit, which is weird because I like yeah. the openness of Harvard and how it's mm-hmm. near Boston. Um, but like I don't know, it just had a really good vibe about it. Um, yeah. The weight room was beautiful. Um, you know, their football, they're obviously, they're competing for an Ivy League championship every year. Um, has, they've been really good. Um, yeah. And they seemed very invested in me, which I really yeah. liked. Um, and they talked to my, like, I went up to a visit with, uh, with my dad and they were talking to my dad a lot. Um, so they really took care of my family too, which was really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I just felt, I think Harvard was just the really right spot. Yeah. For me. So one cool thing is that your dad and uncle both played for BU yeah. back when they had a program. Right, yeah. Um, is that, do you think that played a role in you being a football guy? I think Growing up around men that were football guys like that? Yeah, I think that like, I think that definitely played a role in me starting football mm-hmm. um, and kind of growing up around it. Like, I mean, my parents never made me play a sport. Like, they just, they were always supportive in what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, but kind of right, I started football in second grade, like before 
the weight limit really kind of killed my dreams. <laughs> but <laughs> fucking weight limit. Yeah, no. But like both my uncle and my dad would coach because they because they both love football. They love yeah. the schemes. They love the practices. They were really invested in football. Um, so that definitely made me fall in love with it. Just like watching like college game day, college games with my dad on Saturdays and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. Um, and then kind of in high school, I kind of just like fell in love with the the off season, the weightlifting the running and everything like that, the practices. Um, that's kind of when I knew that I just kind of wanted to keep keep going. Yeah, and your brother's a stud too. He's playing at Tufts. Yeah, he's going to play at Tufts. He's uh, is what position is he? So he's like a he's like a tweener. Like he's uh, he's either going to play D end or he's going to be a, like a split off tight end, like kind of a stand up wow. wide receiver guy. So he's pretty fast. I mean, I does hope he has size. Yeah, he's pretty good. Like he's a little taller than me. Um, doesn't weigh as much, obviously. <laughs> but he's he's pretty fast. He's pretty agile, um, and he's got some good hands too. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. What's his game like? How does he play? What's his style? He uh, he's a little bit of a scrapper, dude. Like, <laughs> like I remember watching him. Like his sophomore year, he transferred to uh, Buckingham Brown and Nichols in oh, yeah. Cambridge with Coach Willie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Willie, yeah good he, guy. He's a DS guy. Oh yeah, no, he's been a great. He's been great to my family. Been a really nice guy. Um, yeah, like I just remember going to his first game, and like my brother had two sacks against like some guy that was way bigger than him, and he just like got around the edge like. You know, he took the physicality, even being, like, a smaller guy, kind of wiry. Um, yeah, and he, he's just a, he's a scrapper. Um, he gets he gets the tough yards. He's really athletic. Um, more athletic than me, I might say. Dang. But I know. It's tough. You but, played basketball when we were younger, yeah? Oh, yeah. I couldn't did play you, that. Did you never play that in high school? Or? No. I played, uh, I played lacrosse. Oh, yeah. I played lacrosse my junior year. Long pole? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, <laughs> That's good to say. No, but that, uh, that that was rough because I went in to lacrosse at like two seventy five, and then our coach started Damn. making us run like two miles every day. So I was dropping weight like it was nothing. Dang. Yeah, that we would run two miles before practice, practice, then run sprints after practice. So who knows in total how many miles that was? Oh, I have no idea. Probably like five miles, maybe more. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it was a. Uh, it definitely got. A little absurd for me, but um, <laughs> it got me in good shape, dude. Like, yeah. that's kind of what I, you know, realized. Like, all right, this running thing kind of, kind of helps me being a better football player. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I definitely don't regret playing lacrosse. You played all four years. The cross? Yeah. No, just just my junior year. Oh, junior year. Yeah. So I actually did track and field my sophomore year. Oh, that's right. I, I, yeah, I think I remember seeing you at meets, bro. Yeah, I wasn't honestly, dude. I wasn't a huge fan of that just because I don't know. I didn't. I gained a lot of unnecessary weight, and like the weight room wasn't open after practice. Um, wow. So like that that kind of played in my decision, like to kind of switch over to lacrosse and get in better shape for the football season. Um, I think I saw you at the freshman sophomore meet or something. Oh, definitely. Was I, it in Norwell I, or something? Yeah, that sounds right. That where they have all those meets. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, how you threw the shot? Yeah. How far did you throw shot? Just out of curiosity. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I honestly couldn't. So well, I I coach shot uh, indoors and outdoors. So now I'm like on my mind. Oh, okay. Like this girl came in Riley Childs. Do you know her? She's from she- Medway. She played basketball at BU. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, do you know? I, her? I don't know. Okay, no, I, I've heard the name. <laughs> Just a local sports fan. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Metro um, West guy. Met- big Metro West guy. <laughs> Um, so she came in, she was super cool, um, and she's just a stud athlete. She was TV MVP in both basketball and volleyball, and she oh, threw really? the discus 120 feet. So really? as a track coach, having her on the podcast, I was like, oh my God, 120 Falling feet. Falling out of the mouth there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, let's not go that okay. way. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to overstep there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I want female guests to keep coming back, <laughs> I'm not, not freak them out like that. Yeah, my bad. Sorry to all the listeners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who, yeah, whoever is still listening at, at this point. Um, yeah, we've been going for a good 55 minutes, uh, basically. But yeah, so track, that was... So is that when you had to cut down weight to get be- like in leaner or qu- better shape after that? Yeah, dude. Like, I, wa- I walked in... I mean, I was not a strong kid going into my junior year. And I walked in... I think I weighed like 285. And it was mm-hmm. not a good 285. Not a good 285. <laughs> not a good 285. So I like lost weight in football. And then, you know, lacrosse kind of just got me in better, you know, condition and everything like that and helped me keep the weight off, which was good. 
Um, yeah, so I, I just felt like lacrosse kind of helped me more than track. And, like, with all the speedy guys, like, I remember playing DS, and, like, there was, like, like five five kid that I had to chase around this entire time. So my feet got really <laughs> good, too. So yeah. Like my feet got really good, like, for pass blocking and everything like that, so that helped. Oh, and lacrosse is a five five guy? Yeah, yeah, Bro, yeah. I'm trying to think of who that would have been. So your, your junior year would have been my junior year. I don't know, maybe Master Bono, who lives down the street. He was a good, um, I don't he was know a good midi, but that. yeah. That TS team was pretty good. Although, actually, there's a kid now that was a senior, and he played. He he just played attack on the um, on the DS State Championship team. Oh, they won states? Noah Teach. Yeah, they won states, bro. Oh, nice. Back-to-back back now, and oh, he's wow. like, that kid can play lacrosse. Like, he's probably about, yeah, he's probably about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and he can Dude, oh, shoot. Don't, like, you don't need to be big to play lacrosse, which is pretty no, crazy. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I always felt like the deep holes were always big growing up. And then, you know, you look at these college games and it's like, you got skinny deep holes out there that just run really good with the sticks. Yeah. So. Did you start? I did. Yeah. That's, so yeah. The big joke around this is, so my brother, Jack, was going to Tufts. He was a really good lacrosse player, like played club and everything like that. Yeah. Um, he was like on the depth chart above me. So he was like the number one defender and I was like the number yeah. three defender or something like that. So like whenever I would like, you know, push him around or something like that, he'd be like, I mean, I started over you. <laughs> but I, like, and like, yeah. I, he tells my friends this like at school and they give me, you know, they give me crap about it. But, uh, but we both started together. Yes. Yeah. Do you ever, you ever talk with Spencer about lacrosse? Cassell? Um, yeah. No, I mean, hang on. By the way, his the, name, why isn't it pronounced Castle? That's my question. I don't know. A lot of people call him Castle. A Does that bother him or no? I don't think so. I mean, yeah. he, I don't know if he, I don't know if he gets called enough where he needs to start like telling people that it's not. <laughs> Puts up a sign or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, no, honestly, I never, never really have. I mean, we talked about Hingham lacrosse sometimes just because they were so good. Yeah. Um, and like Holliston was not that good. Right. Um. Yeah. Honestly, not not Would not you much say, lacrosse. So DS, the big thing is lacrosse. Would you say football is the big thing, or is there another sport that you guys are all all in on? In Holliston? Yeah. Oh yeah, football is a big thing. Okay. Honestly, like the like the fall sports are really good. Like mm-hmm. the 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 football team's been very good. The men's soccer team's been really good. The women's soccer team's been really good. Um, so I think fall sports is definitely Holliston's strong suit. Yeah. At least they were when I was in high school. I don't know what they're looking like the next couple of years. Um. Yeah, definitely. Like those three main sports in the fall are kind is there of the a, pinnacle. Is there a sport you like to watch at Harvard? I mean, I've gone to a couple of basketball games. Like the basketball yeah. team's really good. Kind of sucks because, like, I, I think my freshman year they would have made the tournament, which would have been really cool Ooh. to see them play. Um. That and then I'm actually really good friends with a couple of girls rugby players. So mm-hmm. like watching that they actually won the national championship my freshman year. So I went to the semifinal game. Dang. Yeah. So uh, that's Is that far? Cool. Did you have to travel? No, no, it was right. So the semifinal game, they played Dartmouth at Harvard. Okay. Um, so it was like nice and neat. It was right across the river. Um, yeah, so watching the, the, the like, Charles, the dirty water. Oh, yeah, the dirty water. Dude. <laughs> there were, yeah, I mean, some people have gone in there and I'm like, dude, never go Yo. in there. Like, never <laughs> go in there. You it's will. crazy. It comes through, it bridges like the gap between Dover and Sherborne. Oh, really? Yeah, does it come through Holliston? No, but uh, my grandma lives, like, right across the street from it. So, like, I drive, like, I drive along it all the time. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so they were Are you a good grandson? Obviously, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had dinner with her the other night, yeah, so. What a gentleman, yeah, huh? I know. I haven't seen her a lot because of COVID, but, uh. Yeah, that's a tough thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely, but it was really good to see her. I spent, like, a couple of hours with her. Yeah, it was nice. Mm-hmm. Back to the rugby. I, there's a little bit of an interjection, but <laughs> no, no, dude. But they're uh, like, I mean, it's physical out there, bro. They got yeah. like, they got really good athletes. Um, so that was, like, and I've never seen a rugby game live just because it's not really that popular around here. Mm-hmm. So watching them, um, yeah, it was really impressive. You think you'd be good at rugby? I think so. I mean, yeah. yeah, got the aggression. Have you ever screwed around with it or? No, but a couple of my buddies from high school play it. That used to play football. Yeah, um, that's a big thing. A lot of my friends too that were football guys are like Holy Cross, Holy Cross uh, Club rugby. But I yeah. assume it's too. It just wouldn't be worth the risk of getting injured for you to try something out like that. And I assume you can't do club sports, right? On top. No, no, right? Yeah, I, I can't. I mean, you can do like intramurals. So like mm-hmm. sometimes guys will go out for like three v three basketball or something. Yeah, um, stuff like that. But. 
No, I couldn't couldn't do rugby. At like, Stonehill, they were like telling us they're like it's frowned upon. Like you're not supposed to, because like a kid like a really good like runner on the team like hurt his ankle playing oh, really? playing basketball. Yeah. Oh jeez, my uh, my buddy sprained his ankle at a dance after the season. <laughs> he uh, yeah, it was up at the Hard Rock Cafe in Boston, like, <laughs> down in your Faneuil Hall. Yeah. And he was just, I mean, he's a big dude. He was just jumping around, landing <laughs> on the wrong way and sprained his ankle. That must have been a scene, dude. Oh, it was. And then, like, we walk in the trainer's room, and he's up on a table. And, like, our trainer's like, what the hell happened? <laughs> just, yeah, no, that was a, we had some good laughs about that one. Yeah, that, I, as a kid who uh, came on the podcast, uh, um, I, DS, he, he revealed a story of like how he had gotten hurt right before the Hopkinton lacrosse game, and it was just like it was some pickup shit. He was just playing pickup basketball, got hurt. You know, it's the it's it's the classic tale. Dude, <laughs> dude pickup basketball gets physical. Bro. Are you careful outside of football or not really? I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't do much. Like, I mean, the, yeah. yeah, there are pickup games. Um, I sometimes go to them, sometimes not. But like, I'm not like. You know, in the post, backing anybody down, like yeah. throwing elbows or anything like that. Like, I don't take it that serious. But one weird phenomenon that happens to big guys sometimes is smaller guys try to prove their toughness by acting like tough with you. Have you ever had people like try to start anything with you, like fights or anything like that? No, no, honestly, no. And like, I mean, I'm the type of guy that just like, walk. like I'm not gonna like escalate anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, I'm pretty calm off the field yeah like i don't like i don't need to start anything like it's just not worth it yeah do you watch uh, any of the strongman competitions like you knew robert ober so you big to brian shaw those guys dude i'm a huge youtube fan like with brian shaw the eric uh not i mean eddie hall dude are you gonna watch is the eddie hall fight (laughs) when is that half the reviewers it feels like they've been hyping it up for like so long i thought it was supposed to happen in january and that now i'm hearing like september one of the things is I'm an I'm an MMA fan. Oh, okay. like I love UFC. I saw Half Thor in his exhibitions. Does not look good. Really? Does not look like a boxer. Not at all. That's tough. Man. I've seen Eddie. Did you see that video of him punching that little guy oh, and the yeah. guy just goes flying? Bro. Holy shit, dude! dude. I, like I think Eddie like Eddie was a he was a junior Olympian, right? At swimming or something. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I mean, he's an athlete outside of just strongman. So I mean, hey, I, I mean, he okay. seems like an a little bit of an angry guy. Yeah, so dude. he might like, I mean, he might have some power for those punches. And the, I don't know what half there was like. Half I've, Thor, I've yeah. heard he had like a couple exhibitions and I heard they didn't go well. Yeah. It didn't look great. It didn't, it basically didn't look great. And he's huge. So you wouldn't want to screw with him. It, um, I love watching history, history, strongest man. Do you see that series on I YouTube? No, I haven't seen that. Dude, you got it. You probably seen clips. If you're on YouTube, seeing those guys, they do like, they're doing competitions. It's, it's uh, Oberst, Eddie Hall, okay. Brian. Sh- yes, you have. I and have seen and it, uh, yeah. Nick Best, who was like the Masters World Strongest Man. Yeah. And they're doing like all these strength challenges, like doing the Highland Games, picking up giant rocks and throwing yeah. them. Just like just guys being dudes. Dude, the uh, the money one where they squatted the coin box. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. That was like. Like them taking it off the bar and them shaking yeah. that strong, I was like, I would never. Want and to how much that. was it? It was something six hundred. I think it was seven hundred pounds. Seven hundred pounds, and it was like not stable. It right. was like shaking. Yeah, dude. Like <laughs> Nick, like Nick Best almost like messed up. I think he did mess up his back from that. Oh, because okay. he like went because yeah. like you got to go down and you're unstable and if you like you know I mean the guys were so big they got so many muscles in their back probably something tore. Yeah, you probably you probably got pretty into lifting, right? Just over the years. Yeah. Is it something you enjoy now, or is it something you loathe, or is it something that comes back and forth as time goes on? I mean, I like it. I mean, I've it was tough, like especially in high school, we would have early summer workouts and like just like lifting after you run. It's it, it, I mean, it's a pain sometimes, but I've come to enjoy it. Um, just like kind because of, our strength coaches are good about teaching us the science behind why we do it too. Mm-hmm. Um. It's just kind of understanding, like, I'm not a huge, like, back squat fan. Like, I'd much rather front squat. I think it's a little more beneficial. Wow. Yeah, like, my lower back's not great. Um, and I think front squat, like, engages the core a lot more. And I'm, like, more quad dominant. So I kind, of, I kind of like the front squat a little more. Um, but just, like, I've gotten into, like, a lot of Olympic lifting. I think that's really beneficial, especially, like, as an offensive lineman using your hips and everything like that. Um, 
yeah, so I, I really enjoy every lift. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, is there any any other piece of advice that you would want to give to young football players or anything you want to say? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you just got to work hard. I mean, I know that's pretty cliche, but, you know, if you got an opportunity to play at the next level, no matter where where you go, um, you know, talk to, talk to anybody who's willing to talk to you because, you know, the coaching carousel in college is pretty crazy. It's a business like anything else. Um, so even though, like, somebody might be, Somebody might be recruiting you at Tufts, and then the next day you might be at Dartmouth or something like that um, as a new hire. So you never know where guys go, and coaches talk a lot. So you know, make sure you just always up front, look them in the eye, shake their hand firmly. Yeah. Um, you know, and and be confident because these guys look at you because they want you. Um, and sometimes yeah. like high school kids can get like, I remember I like in high school. I walked down and you know Jim Harbo was there standing in my wow uh, guidance counselor's room and like you know Holy you, get, shit. you get starstruck a little bit and it's just like you know they're there to see you just to like and you know there's no pressure to it I mean I knew I wasn't going to Michigan I mean I'm not like six six you know he yeah. loves the Massachusetts kids he does yeah so <laughs> I think like their defensive coordinator Don Brown who's actually at Arizona now. He, uh, he coached at BC for a number of years. So I think he understood, like, you know, the developing talent in Mass, which um, I think yeah. Mass is, like, kind of an up-and-coming football state. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's not as good as, like, the Florida's, the world, the Texas is. Um, I feel like we're going to get into this. You went down – tell me about this – tell me the story of meeting Jim Harbaugh. You get yeah, a call. So, Did you know he was coming in? No. So my coach texted me. He was like, hey, a coach from Mich- Michigan is coming in. So I was like, all right, it's probably, like – no, a grad assistant or like some position coach, and then when I walked <laughs> down, like I Jim Harbaugh was in the room, so I shook his hand and like he was really nice, really nice guy. Don Brown was in the room, um, and I was like starstruck, dude. Like that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, it was really nice of them to come see me. Like definitely was not going to mission. Definitely was not what they were looking for, wow. um, just size wise. But uh, yeah, no, it was. Uh, what was the was, conversation like? No, I'm just talking about like I don't know how the season went, um, you know how the weight room's going, kind of just like typical recruiting talk and everything like that. Yeah. Um, you know what my numbers are, how big I am. Um, yeah, there it was like probably a ten minute conversation. Then they went to go see some kid who was like six eight, three hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Gonzer has a similar story. He was just in his dorm room one day at Milton Academy, and the coach was like, "Hey, come." Come down to my office and Harbaugh was standing there. Yeah. He's just around, I guess. I guess. I don't know. What was it like going back to class? Did you tell your football friends, like, guess who I, you're not going to believe who I just met? Or kids, was their buzz? Like, hey, you're not going to believe who I just saw in the hall? Well, not, so like, our quarterback was, like, right outside when Harbaugh walked in, I guess. So I walked back to class and, like, he was there and he was like, dude, what the hell was that about? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, it was just, like I like I had a lot of buzz going around, um, just like a lot of coaches coming in every single day um, during like my junior spring. So to get Harbaugh in there was like pretty surreal, obviously. Yeah. Well, I think that's a pretty pretty awesome story to to end on. <laughs> yeah. Huge thanks to Scott Elliott for coming on episode thirty three of the Young Shakespeare, Young Shakespeare podcast. Please tune in for the next episode. Please drop uh, subscribe. And thanks so much to Scott for coming out. Yeah, thanks for having me, Danny. All right. Have a good one, folks.